All right, so picking up from where we left off in the last video, we spoke about using audio bend markers to create MIDI triggers. We then put them in the proper pitch and we load a virtual instrument of some sort. It can be Easy Drummer, it can be Superior Drummer, it can be any virtual instrument that you have that can trigger drums. You can use that as long as you make sure you find out where the actual note is being triggered from and that you set that up properly. I mentioned that my issue um, with with just doing it like this is that it, it sounds good when you play it and you're like, oh, great, we have our MIDI triggers and I can bring this up and I can blend the two of these together and now it sounds awesome. The problem is that once you kind of really kind of zone in on things and once you really zero in on everything, the triggers themselves, they need a pa you need to go over them with a pass to make sure that they're being triggered correctly. And then you have another thing to take into account. You have the actual sample that you're using. You have to know whether that is in phase with the actual drum. So for example, what happens if the sample that you're using starts on the negative when your actual recorded drum starts on the positive? Then you have like, they could be canceling each other out. So there's two different things I like to look at. First of all, let's look at the virtual instrument. If we zoom in here, let's go to the very, very top and then let's wind back to the beginning. Notice that we have this over here. Now this is gonna to snap to zero crossings by default. So sometimes you will load a sample. Let me see if I can find an example. This might be an example over here. Sometimes you'll load a sample and it actually, I'm trying to find maybe something a little bit better. It actually has a lot, ah, here's a good example. It actually has a lot of silence. So depending on what the, which means that if the MIDI trigger hits, that there'll be a fraction of silence before it actually plays a sample. Now this isn't so bad in something like, for example, percussion, but if you have something where you're looking to phase align it and you have like a really spiky transient, like a snare or a kick drum or a snare drum, then you need to go into your sample player and you need to make sure that you're taking that into account. Now in this case, I don't know if I would necessarily worry about that th this much. It's only a little bit, but let's say that I said, okay, here, or I could even make a choice to cut into the sample a little bit further. Basically, you want to make your choice in terms of how you want this sample to be triggered. That's the first thing. Now, there's two different approaches that I take when I'm basically double checking to make sure that everything was right. One of them is that if we go back to the beginning of this, because we have these bend markers present, it makes it really easy to tab through every single one. So as I'm tabbing, it's going through every single one of these over here. And notice it's done actually a good job in terms of where it shows a transient detection point. You, in this case, it, it, it got it off. And this is for example, this is an example of why I say that you need to go through everything. So what I would actually do is go through each one of these and I would basically want to do this and I could also have, for example, um, my, my MIDI information up and if I stayed zoomed in over here and I have scrolling set to on, then I can basically, let's head over here, I can basically choose one of these and then as I'm going over here, if I locate the selection by choosing the L key, I'm doing this in the editor, right? I'm holding this down. I'm using the left arrow or the right arrow to move. So let me go home and then let's locate selection. Now I'm going to go right arrow, locate selection. I can tell you right now that that might not be perfect. Now let's go right arrow again, locate selection. Take a look at some of these. Okay, in the case that I have already gone into my sample editor and I've chosen to make sure that it's starting right at the very beginning, then I'm going to go home, locate selection. I'm gonna go right arrow, locate selection. And in this case, I can already tell you that this needs to be moved a little bit. How much? Not a lot, but it does need to be moved a little bit. So in that case, I can just literally click, hold and drag and you wanna make sure that your snapping is off over here. I can just click, hold, and drag, and then I can locate the selection again, right? So let's go back, locate selection, and then in this case, I've actually done it way too much. So I would probably, in, in this case, I would probably click my cursor where it needs to be, and then based on your snapping behaviors, you could have, for example, um, snapping to cursor, snap to loop, snap to events, everything like that. So I would then just make sure that I'm just moving this, and then I want that alignment to be a little bit better, so that looks better. Now, again, right arrow, right arrow, locate, right arrow, L, right arrow, L, right arrow, L. And I 
I'm only going to start, oh, right over there. So this one here is going to be an issue. How much of an issue is it? Well, it's pretty small if you take a look at everything. So in this case, I could quite simply just move this over and kind of do this by eye, and then we'll do the locate selection again, and that looks better. And then again, right arrow, L, right arrow, L, this one again. How much does it need to move? Okay, well, I'm just going to place my cursor over here. It needs to move by this much. We'll move that a little bit. That is one way, using the MIDI triggers. I have to be honest with you. I have done it this way before, and the reason I would do it this way is if I'm not sure which sample I'm going to use yet, but an easier way for me, and the way that I generally end up doing it, is that once I've generated the MIDI triggers, and once I'm happy with everything, at this point, I could do two things. I could either transform this to audio, or I could, for example, write, um, let's go like MIDI kick something like that. If I click, hold, and drag this down, it's just going to generate an audio file, which will be a stereo print of the MIDI triggers that I've created. So now I have actual MIDI triggers that have been created over here. In this case, I no longer need this. I could hide and deactivate this, or let me just bring this up underneath. Now, what I like to do in this case, let's work with a smaller section. I'm gonna double click this split, and we will delete this area over here. So generally speaking, what I like to do here is I will right click and I'm going to go to the audio menu. I'm going to detect the transients and then I'm going to have a look at the transient detection and I like where it's done it. It's done it at the beginning. Now, once I've done this transient detection, I'm going to right click. We'll go to the audio menu over here and then we have the option to split at bend markers. Now, what ends up happening here is that we have the ability to now basically slip each one of these individually. So I like to work in at a very zoomed in state when I'm working. So what I'm going to do first is let's shift double click, which selects all of these. And I'm going to just going to pull back the end of everything. And it, I, I find it just makes it a little bit cleaner. So now what I'm going to do over here is let's actually this one for some reason didn't trigger exactly the way I wanted it to. So let's select this, get rid of it. Let's just alter option, drag this one over and we'll call it about here. And we'll say that that's about as close as it needs to be. And then for this one over here, I'm going to use the L to locate selection. I'm just zooming in. And when you have things zoomed in like this, you can basically just slip this back to maybe about here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. So now I'm going to use just the right arrow key. And I'm just taking a look at things visually. And then if I need to adjust things, I can either pull them back and reposition them, or I can also slip. Another thing that you can do if you want to leave yourself a little bit of room at the top is you can shift, double click. You can pull everything back a bit so you have a little bit of a padding. All right, so now I'm going to go L. That looks not too bad. That looks not too bad. That looks okay. This one over here, again, I'm just going to slip this a little bit, and we'll go to the right arrow again. Right arrow, this one, I'll slip it, and I'm using those two modifiers. Over here, this one, it's a little bit out of whack. I find it easier to slip it as audio because also I can see the, uh, the phase relationship that everything has. Go like this, these two over here, I'll pull this back, go like this. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, man, this is tedious. I would never do this. Who does this? Why not just use a trigger plugin or something? Yeah, you could, but if you're doing something and you're trying to be a, you know, make it perfect and everything like that, and you wanna, Make sure that everything is optimized for phase and all of your triggers are happening at the right point. This is a this is how it's done. I don't know any other way that is any shortcuts to doing the work <laughs> that needs to be done. Uh, over here. And also, I'm gonna give you a tip. I'm using my pointy finger on my left side to use the right arrow, and then I use my pinky and my ring finger to do the slip so I can keep everything kind of like right here and let's see this one over here. That looks good. This one, that's not bad. I'm just choosing the stuff that really is like noticeably off. Okay, so we'll go back to the very beginning and we'll readjust this one a little bit. So now let's say for argument's sake that this has been optimized. Now at this point, then I would consider maybe putting some EQ on and I would say like, what do I need exactly from this sample? Maybe I just want to filter that off. Maybe also I want to have, instead of a shelf, we'll change this to peaking. I just want to basically make this work with everything.
Now, arguably, you could also mess around with the polarity. You could say to yourself, which sounds better? This took a couple steps. Like I said, I wouldn't mess around with the second step where you have to work with MIDI triggers and try to align them to audio. If I was using a virtual instrument and I was committed to that, I would just render that as audio, detect the transients. They should be very easy. It should be very clean in terms of the transient detection. Then the next step is once you have a transient detected, you split based on the bend markers. Then you select everything, you peel a little bit back on the back end, and you can also peel a little bit forward on the front end. And then you're using uh, your right arrow key or your left arrow key, you zoom in super tight, and you're basically just using right arrow or left arrow, and then any changes that need to be made, you're doing that by using the slip editing command, which is command option or control alt on a PC. So just like this, you go through every single one. It seems like it's a lot of work, but guess what? Like when you're going through these pretty quickly and you can see, okay, maybe this one needs a little bit of an adjustment. It doesn't take long for you to get through. I'm just going through and you just move the ones that are like majorly out. So that one over here, like that looked like it was out. Just kind of do it by eye. The benefit here though, is that we have the actual velocity that came from the main source track that was interpreted very nicely by the bend markers. And then any inconsistencies in terms of where the sample starts or any inconsistencies in terms of where the transient detection maybe was off and, and it's placed either too early or too late in the timeline, they're very easy to work out with slip editing. So that is the second stage, which in my opinion is in extremely important if you want to get accurate MIDI triggers, which I'm assuming most of you do. How would I segregate this in my work? Well, if I was doing production, um, I would, and I needed to get going fast and I needed to replace something, I would do this very quickly. Or maybe even if I was starting a mix and I knew that I needed to replace a kick drum, I would really quickly, quickly detect the transients, create a trigger track, find a virtual instrument where it's giving me what I want and get that sorted. I would maybe even get a gain stage to where I like it and mixed. But then immediately, the minute I had a little bit more time to peel back another layer, I would definitely render that to audio and then start looking at splitting it up and adjusting each one of these and going through hit by hit to make sure that everything's perfect. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope that you enjoyed this and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.